if you're on a window manager and want to make use of multiple monitors, it'd be kind of a pain to actually get those monitors to play nicely. So typically the way that I do this is with a tool called XRand or XR, and however you want to pronounce it, I'm not going to argue on that. Basically what it does is lets you tell X where the monitors are located virtually. So let's say I get to the edge of my main monitor, whether that should actually be a hard border or whether it should move my cursor onto my second monitor. But because XRender is a CLI tool, it can be a little bit fiddly to work with anything graphical like this. So today we're looking at another application called ARender, which is basically a GUI front end for XRender. Now, it doesn't do every single thing that XRender does, but most things are here. And one of the good things about this is you can actually go and export an XRender command. So if you want to do some extra configuration, you can always go and do that. So my layout is pretty straightforward. As we can see, we have three monitors here. We have DisplayPort 1, DisplayPort 0, and HDMI-A-0. Now, these names I didn't set myself. So when X looks at the inputs on my computer, this is what it actually sees them named as. Now, as we can see also, I have this thick black line here. So this basically means that it's my primary monitor. Basically, the primary monitor is going to be a fallback monitor when X can only display on one monitor, like when you're, say, logging in from the TTY. Now... We can go and drag these around as much as we want, but before we get to that, the physical space does not need to line up to the virtual space. So in my case, my left-hand monitor, so DisplayPort 1, is physically to the left of my main monitor. But in the case of HDMI-0, but in the case of HDMI-A-0, it's actually behind the monitor. So technically, this would be more true to how it's actually laid out, but I don't really find it comfortable to move above the monitor to go to another monitor. So I'd much rather have it to the right. That's just how I like to work. And you can go and line them and you can go and line them up exactly how you want them. You don't have to have them lined up perfectly. This would even be a perfectly valid layout. Now, one thing to note about your monitors is just because it's plugged in doesn't mean that it's an active monitor. So in this case, I am displaying actively on DisplayPort 1, DisplayPort 0, and HDMI-A-0. But if I did something like, say... Uh, turn that one off, it would still be physically on, but X isn't actually going to output anything to it. So if you are missing any of your monitors here, make sure you go into this drop down list in here and actually go and set that to active. And just because your monitor is powered down doesn't mean that it's inactive. So if your monitor is on standby and it's plugged into your computer, X may still actually detect that monitor. And if the monitor is set to active, it will still try to display on that monitor, even though you won't be able to see it. Now, anything in this drop down that is grayed out either means one, you have nothing plugged into it, two, you might have a broken cable, three, for whatever reason, X can't actually detect it, or four, the monitor is physically powered down at the wall. So not just on standby, but you've actually gone and turned it off and it isn't receiving any power. Okay, so we can do much more than just move the monitors around. So let's say we want to go and modify this monitor right here. So we don't just have to go into this drop down here. We can actually go and right click directly on one of these monitors and just see the settings for that monitor. So let's say for display port zero. Now let's say we want to go and do something like change the resolution. So the only resolutions that are going to be in here are the ones that are actually displayed on the chip in your monitor. So if for whatever reason the manufacturer didn't actually program the monitor correctly, you may have resolutions actually missing in here. But let's go and set it to something like 1280 by 800. And as we can see, nothing has actually changed. So nothing actually changes until we go and click this tick up here. If it did, it would be really annoying when we're trying to drag these monitors around. So let's just go click the tick and see what happens. Except I guess OBS just isn't capturing it properly, but on my main screen, it is running at 1280 by 800. Now, one problem that ARANDA does have is unlike the CLI tool, if the resolution isn't actually in this list, in that tool, what you could do is actually go and specify a custom resolution, and if it is supported by the monitor, then it would work. So for example, I've had TVs before where they don't actually respond to being 4K, but I can go and manually set it to 4K and it does work. So... That is one benefit of just using the CLI tool directly. We can also go and rotate a monitor as well. Now, I've never really been a fan of having a vertical monitor, but I guess if that's something you want to use, this is basically how you go and do that. Now, keep in mind that if you don't physically go and rotate your monitor now, it actually has rotated every single piece of content on that screen. So this means that your mouse movement will also be rotated as well. So just keep that in mind. If you do do this, make sure you physically go rotate the monitor, unless you're just trying to mess with someone. One thing I don't really see the point of though, is going inverted. So this is basically the same as having a regular monitor, but for whatever reason, it's going to be upside down. Now, if someone knows the use for this, feel free to let me know.
Now, when it comes to actually placing your monitors, keep in mind that any virtual space between them, so anything like this, will be space that needs to be traversed by your mouse to actually move it over to that screen. It won't go and clear this space for you. So if I go and apply this now, and I try to actually move my cursor over to that screen, on my screen, it has actually gone off the edge of my screen, but it hasn't actually reached my third monitor yet, and eventually it's going to get there, and now it actually has. That may end up being something that you intend to do, but in most situations, I'll try to avoid it and actually have your monitors basically up against each other's edge. Now, this application does make use of snapping, which does make it a bit easier to actually go and place stuff, but as you may have guessed from earlier, we don't actually need to line them up perfectly. So if we do something like, say, this, and then I go and apply it, if I try to move my cursor to that other screen, right here, it's perfectly solid. But if I keep going down the screen, eventually, there we go, now it's actually on the second monitor. Now, I personally don't like working like this, but if you really need to do it for whatever reason, it is here. Now, if you actually want to go and make sure that these weirdly out of place monitors are lined up, it will snap to this light gray box as well. So if we put it there. Now they're actually in line. We go and apply this. And now it's slightly less terrible for the terrible layout. And speaking of things that you shouldn't do, so let's actually line these up perfectly again. You can also go and overlap monitors. So if we do something like, say, this, and I apply it, I'm not sure what you're going to see on OBS. Okay, you can actually see my notes on the screen. So these notes are actually on my third monitor, and they're also on my main monitor. And this screen right here is also half on my third monitor along with my poly bar. So when it's actually on that third monitor, you can also see my cursor being doubled as well. Now, I think I do have a use case for this. So if you need to have a portion of your screen where you're recording and you want it to be duplicated for some reason, this is a thing you can do. But besides that, I'm not really sure when you would ever want to do this. Now, sadly, there's no undo button. So if you make some layout like this and you're like, oh, I want to go back to some earlier stage, that's not something you can actually do. But if you want to go back to your current layout without actually saving it, you can go and click this new button up here and it will return it to that. It's not a big deal because typically you won't have that many monitors to actually deal with, but it would be something I would like to see. Now, let's say you get to a point where you're like, hey, I like this layout. Let's make something weird like, let's say this. Let's say that this is the absolute perfect layout for you. What you can go and do is go and press this save button up here, and this will actually go and generate an XRANDA script. So let's just call it uh, awful, and we'll save this. And let's go into my file manager now. So that was being saved in a directory called .screen layout. Now you don't have to save it in here. This is just for whatever reason the default directory it goes with. I would personally just go and delete this and then just move the scripts wherever you want the scripts to actually be located. So this script, as we can see, basically does everything that a Rander was going to be doing. And my suggestion with this is go and take this script, put it in something like Rofi or D menu, give it a name so that every time you want to go and switch back to a previous version, all you would need to do is just run that script rather than having to go and fiddle around with the GUI application every single time. And even though I didn't make my layouts with a Rander, that's pretty much what I've gone and done. So if I go and run super X, as we can see, these are all the layouts that I actually use. Now, one thing you can't actually do with Aranda is go and set up monitor duplicates. So that is something I would like to see, but it's not that big of a deal. It's pretty easy to set up directly inside of Xranda. Now, let's say you're afraid of modifying the Xranda command directly. So what we can actually go and do is reload that command back inside of Aranda. So click this button up here and then reload awful.sh. And as we can see, that's the layout we just had before. So we can go and modify this again. Let's say that this is the new layout we want. We can then go and save this. And then let's just overwrite that previous script we had. And there we go. Now I will give you a little bit of a warning because I know someone's probably gonna try to do it. So make sure that you don't go and do something dumb like this where you have none of your monitors active. Because what's gonna happen here is basically you're gonna have no output on your display. So even if it's just one monitor, make sure it's displaying on something. If you do, for whatever reason, go and turn everything to be inactive. The easiest way to fix that is one, to reboot your system. Or if you don't want to do that, you can go and start up a second TTY and then re-log in, kill off your X server, and you should be good then. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say about this. I don't think there's actually anything else of note to actually mention. I would really recommend this tool if you don't want to go and mess around with X Xranda. 
Once you have your layouts working though, x ran is not really that big of a deal because you're not going to be going back and modifying them unless, of course, you want to do these really weird layouts, but 99% of people just want to have their monitors being displayed on. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. Before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald Corbinian, Andrew Nathan, David Montezar, Will Chico Bento, Joseph Mitchell, Peter D. Tony Tushar, and all my $2 supporters. If you want to go on support, I work with my links down below to my Patreon, subscribe star, leave a pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch it on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. And and I'm out.